Thank you so much. Um, let me take this opportunity and greet the Blackboard Saints in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Um, I'd love to thank the Lord for his loving kindness. You know, when, when Solomon writes on this, he says his mercies are new every morning. Just waking up to fresh nature or to fresh a cultivar of God's mercy, that alone is refreshing. And we thank God and we trust him. We trust him to sustain us through the course, through the course of the day and to sustain us through this long weekend. Let me also thank the opportunity that I've been afforded to minister to God's children. That alone, I do not take it light. It is always humbling because whenever I receive an invite to minister to God's people. I never viewed it as God having something to say to his people that he wants me to say to them, but I always perceived it as God having something to say to me and he just wants my attention. So when I say thank you for this opportunity, I simply mean that you afforded me time to dine and have conversation with God, not only for his people, but for also for my salvation. And today I'll be talking under a theme or a topic that says growing in Christ. And fortunately, um, I'm an agriculturalist by qualification. When I was given this theme already, already, the word growing gave me an idea of a tree that before you see any big tree or gigantic tree, it always starts as a seed. So before you grow, you are first planted. Before you grow, note that before you grow, you are first planted. And when you are planted, there are processes that follows after you are being planted. Now, many are times when you are planting something, you take a seed and you put it under the soil. It is as if you are burying it. It is as if you are you, you are completely hiding it, never to see it again. But the process of growth, it starts with death. Now, when the seed gets under the soil, this is what it does. It gets to a state where it dies. Like when you look at it, there is no life in it. There is not, nothing happening. And as it dies, then it germinates. You know, when, when you're looking on top of the soil, when you're looking on the surface of the soil, for a few weeks, you will not see anything happening. And you will conclude that that thing is buried. And you will conclude that seed is buried. Give it a few weeks, give it a month, as it is there under the soil. It is graciously using the components from the soil. It is graciously feasting from the nutrients in the soil for its growth. Hey, let, me, let, let, let me pause for a while here. Before I go to my text, I only know that I've got a few minutes to get this message across. When you look at the seed, when you look on top of the soil, you conclude that there is nothing happening in the life of the seed. Why? Because you do not see any tangible or any visible results on top of the soil. For weeks or so, the seed is feasting on the nutrients that it finds in the soil. The seed is making itself comfortable. It makes itself acquainted to the soil. It, 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 it creates a close relationship with the soil to a point that when the soil knows that the seed now is ready, the soil now has given all, when the soil now has given all to the seed, to make sure that the seed now is ready to survive, even outside, and the seed is now ready to face the sun, the wind, the hotness, the rain, the heavy rains. Now, when the soil knows that the seed is ready, this is what happens. The soil opens way. It paves way. It opens an opportunity through its particles 
to allow now the roots from the seed to penetrate upwardly. And when you start to see little leaves growing, you should know it all started beneath the soil. Know that it started way back days ago where God was nurturing the seed, was preparing the seed. So when you see growth of the tree, know it all started through planting. It all started through feasting in the nutrients of the soil under the soil. Now let me come. The apostle Peter writes in his second, second episode, chapter three, verse 18. He said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Beloved, it does not start on the pulpit. It does not start with us shining and having these beautiful heads and all that. It does not start with us going there to evangelize, but it starts with us being planted in his grace. And as we are planted in grace, as Peter gives us this image, as we are planted in his grace, people who look above, people who look above grace, they will not see us emerging yet. Why? Because we are still feasting. We are still getting to know what is this thing called grace. We are still trying to align ourselves with it. Now, I came across the writer which said to me that grace has different variants. Now, we live in a time of this pandemic. Fortunately, we've been taught that it has many variants. Uh, we come from this and it changes its nature, but it's the same pandemic, but it changes its nature. It comes like this, same as grace. Grace has different variants. Now, allow me to share just three for the sake of time. One, grace comes in a form of forgiveness. For we were dead in sin. Christ came and died for us. Christ initiated forgiveness with us. We had sinned against him. But this is the gracious part about grace, is that Christ, being the one who is sinned against, he's the first one to initiate the forgiveness process. If you read the book of 2 Chronicles, or rather 2 Samuel chapter 9, you get that the story of Mephibosheth. There David says, is there yet anyone remaining in the house of Saul so that I could show grace, I could show kindness for the sake of Jonathan. Now, beloved, you will understand that Saul was an enemy to David. Saul wanted David dead. But this is the gracious part about grace. Instead of seeking for revenge, instead of seeking to completely destroy the enemy, David seeks to make peace, seeks to make, to show kindness, to show grace to the enemy. Believe you me, as long as Mephibosheth remained, the seed of Saul was still alive. He could have completely destroyed Mephibosheth and he was going to be justified to do that because in him, he carried the same blood as that of Saul. And if he, if Saul were to conquer against David, believe you me, Mephibosheth was going to be the heir of Saul's kingdom. Now, David would be, have been justified to completely eradicate or annihilate Mephibosheth. But this is grace. David fixed Mephibosheth just to show kindness. You can imagine him carrying the blood of the enemy, him carrying the seed in him or the genes of the enemy, he could have been completely destroyed. But beloved, believe me you when I say we were born and conceived in sin. Through our blood runs the genes of sin. God would have been justified to completely annihilate us. But this is the gracious part about grace is that he sent his only begotten son to come and reconcile us to him 
without us even asking forgiveness. Now that is grace in its form. Grace is gracious when it initiates peace with the person who offends. Number two, another variant of grace. Grace accepts, hey, I love this one. Grace, grace accepts, it accepts us as we are. He says, come as you are. And I love how John puts it. He says, beloved, behold what manner of love that God has bestowed upon us that he allows us to be called his children. The fact that God accepts us, the fact that God says to us, come as you are, do not change anything. I know what I can do with you. And the other last part that I would love to share about grace, this other variant of grace is that grace enable us. Hey, grace enable us. By nature, we are slaves of sin. In us, there is no ability to say no to sin. But believe you me when I say, when grace is planted within us, it trains us. It gives us the ability to say no thank you to sin. Hallelujah. We need grace, beloved, in order to grow in Christ. We need to accept Christ as God's initiative, as God's means to reconcile himself with us. We need to accept Christ because Christ alone is the one who will enable us to say all things are good, but they are not all good for me. Grace will enable us to say no thank you. Now when Peter says grow in grace, and in understanding of the Lord and our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to go past the stage where we are now molested by sin. We need to grasp and fully access the power to say no to sin. Before I leave, before I stop, allow me to urge you, brethren, when sinners beset you, when the devil approach you today, Say, uh uh, not today, devil. His grace is sufficient for me. As we start this series of growing in Christ, allow me to invite you and say to you, His grace is sufficient for you. You want to be free from sin? His grace is sufficient for you. You want to be redeemed for things, from things that are holding you bondage? His grace is sufficient for you. And because of his grace, you don't know that you don't owe the devil anything. Next time he knocks at your door, tell him, I'm sorry, devil. Grace, grace alone has buried me. Wait until I germinate. Let's close our eyes as we pray. Heavenly Father in heaven, we thank you for the power that you've given us through your grace. We thank you that you've searched for us when we wanted nothing to do with you. We thank you that you remind us this morning that we need to boast about nothing because we did nothing to deserve your grace. The reason that it is grace, it is because we are not deserving of it. Lord Jesus, as we commence this day, we come before the throne of thy mercy we are dirty, we are so sinful, Lord. Plunge us in your precious blood. Redeem us from our sinful ways. Enable us to say no to the devil. Enable us to deny all the power of the enemy. Enable us to walk boldly as the representative of Christ in this sinful world. Lord Jesus, there are people throughout who are bearing their loved ones. We need your grace in a form of your presence to tabernacle with your children. Heavenly Father, we submit our ways before you. We submit everything to you because in us, we have nothing good that we can offer to you except our sinful lives. Please, Lord, save us 
We need you. Cleanse us. We need you. Feed us with your word so that, Lord, when the time of growth comes, we can be able to bear fruits. This is my humble prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.